Good morning. Last Thursday and Friday, I told you about Robert Manry, this 47-year-old guy who was a copy editor at a newspaper who had gone out and bought a 13 and a half foot sailboat, spent a year fixing it up, and after sailing it for seven years, decided he was now prepared to sail by himself across the Atlantic Ocean in a 13 and a half foot boat. He would take off, it would take 78 days, 78 days to cover 3,200 miles from Falmouth, Massachusetts, all the way to Falmouth, England. It was an incredible journey. When he arrived, he arrived to more than 50,000 people cheering. All kinds of radio, newspaper, television stations were there. He was truly an amazing hero. And then I also told you that it was rather tragic, ironic, that here he had taken such a voyage that everyone was afraid he was going to die. And then six years later, at the age of 52, he had a massive heart attack and he died. Not from sailing. He had a heart attack. Well, before that, he wrote a book called Tinkerbell, and he described his trip. It became a, a bestseller, and he began making his living by going and giving speeches and inspiring other people to pursue their dreams. I love the tagline that quite often he would use. He would say, there is no dream so large that it can't fit into a tiny boat. He tried to inspire people to be able to dream. Fast forward 25 years. 25 years, Stephen Weistrack was going to sail from Southern California to Hawaii by himself. He had always loved reading these sailing books of people who had single-handedly made these kinds of voyages. And his favorite book to read was Tinkerbell. And so he's going back and reading it again, reading the chapter entitled Comments for Sailors. It's where Robert Manry had talked about the food that he had brought and the, all the provisions he had on board, what he felt was necessary and not. And so Stephen now, 25 years later, 1996, preparing to sail to Hawaii, was reading that chapter again when he noticed one of the things he said he had was a 16 millimeter movie camera and 50 rolls of Crotocom film. And he suddenly thought to himself, I've never seen those pictures. I've never seen that film. What in the world has happened to it? So he started hunting down Douglas, Robert Manry's son. He was all of 11 years old when he had made that crossing. And he finally found him and started asking him, do you know about the film? Do you know where it would be? He had no idea. The extended family had kind of drifted apart after Robert and his mother, Virginia, had passed away. But he gave him names and addresses and how to find people, and so in the end, with detective work, he found Robert Manry's brother, John, and got in touch with John and said, do you know anything about this film? And he said, yes, I have it all in a cardboard box in the back of my garage. Been sitting there for years, and several times I thought about throwing it out with spring cleaning. Now Stephen got the film. He went back and talked to Douglas and, and got the ideas on how to do some more research. And then he finally found Aunt Louise. And Aunt Louise, well, she had all kinds of newspaper articles and other pictures. And, and so the Robert Manry Project was started and he worked on it for 21 years. 21 years gaining all this information and film and then figuring out how to get it edited and, and put together in today's type of movie. Finally, it was in 2018 at the Cleveland Film Festival that the Manry Project finally revealed its movie, and it won Best Movie. And it has gone on to so many different film festivals all around the country, winning all kinds of different awards, because it's still a movie that will inspire. The title of the movie is Mandry at Sea, In the Wake of a Dream. It really put me to thinking, in the wake of a dream, we all leave awake. By the way we live our lives and what we say and what we do and how we treat other people, we all leave awake. Robert Manry inspired so many thousands of people in his day, 
but he continued to inspire thousands of people so many years after his death. What's the wake that you're going to leave? How will people remember you? You and I have the opportunity to live in such a way that whether it's a child, a grandchild, a friend, it may be a stranger. You and I are going to leave awake and we can live in such a way that your life will inspire, give hope, and bless others. Decide how you're going to go out and live today. Go out and share God's love and bring hope in this world. Have a good one.